February 2nd, 2016. It was just a regular Tuesday evening. I had just packed up some food and I was going to my friend's place, uh, my friend's Riswood place. What are you pondering? We were at his place and we had this ritual of having dinner whilst watching a certain YouTuber. A certain YouTuber by the name of Casey Neistat. GQ's new media star is Casey Neistat. And I remember this particular day because he had just posted this video called My All Time Greatest. I got it! I remember watching that video and just completely forgetting about the food that we had because we were just so invested in it. On my way back home that day, I, I opened up my notes app and I just wrote I want to make videos like that. And, and I felt like my naive mind thought that probably the only way that I can make videos like Casey Neistat was by becoming Casey Neistat. But how does one become Casey Neistat? Is it the hair? Is it the glasses? I mean, it's got to be the skateboard, right? Or... Is it flying at drone inside? But unlike that pathetic attempt, I did really try and become Casey Neistat. I don't think people noticed, but I started making videos in 2016. This was my first short film. Can you get the reference? <laughs> Between 2016 and 2018, I made more than 100 videos, out of which 80 were vlogs. And if you randomly open any of these vlogs, I'm willing to bet my life that those vlogs started with a time lapse and with a vlog music. <sighs> You see, Casey is my biggest role model when it comes to making videos. I mean, he's, he still is, but I had this big misconception that if I wanted to make videos like Casey Neistat, I had to become Casey Neistat. So I set myself this extremely impossible task of becoming Casey Neistat. And I was proven wrong, obviously. You see, defining a role model singularly is rather difficult. In her doctoral thesis, Dr. Morgan Roth from the University of Exeter classified role models into three core definitions. Role models as behavioral models, role models as representations of the possible, and role models as inspirations. The first definition states that role models provide a template for the behavior and mannerisms that one requires to achieve similar success. The second definition explores the effect of role models on expanding the possibilities of what one thinks could be achieved. It's like a key to an unexplored world, representative of novel possibilities. The third definition tackled the influence that role model can have on an aspirant as to what they see as desirable. It's based on a deep chain of psychological parameters that is way beyond the scope of this video. So we will just be focusing on the first two definitions. Like I mentioned before, the second definition holds the key. It's our portal to the unexplored, the unknown realm of possibilities. Because usually when you get smitten by somebody, the first impact that they have, the first strong impact that they usually have is that they question your limits. They, they make you think outside of your box and make you think what else is possible. Once you enter this new realm, you find yourself immersed in this, for the lack of better words, behavioral template. So let's start from the beginning. Let's say you, the aspirant with a certain set of pre-existing goals, stumbles upon this new personality whose success and competence in a particular field appeals to you. Having already breached the thinking limitations of the aspirant, the role model then utilizes his attributes to not only motivate him to pursue his pre-existing goals, but also inculcate new aspirations, thereby reaching new boundaries. This process is what I termed as goal progression. This progression triggers a learning phase that pushes the aspirant into learning new things to achieve the goals and to reach the competence and in turn the success of the role model. The learning phase can take up any form. Like for me, it took the form of iterative imitation as I made more than a hundred videos imitating Casey's style. For you, it might be something completely different as no two learning approaches necessarily need to be the same. Learning leads to expectancy from oneself 
and also adds value to one's newly formed competency. There is an underlying confidence in the aspirant post this learning phase and the only thing that's now left to do is to put this newfound competence and confidence into one's work and sow the seed for your success. But, and this is a big fat but, it's not as simple. I personally feel that it is very easy to get stuck in the phase of replicating somebody else's work, especially if you find early success. You see, that creates sort of an imbalance between your competency and the confidence, the false sense of confidence that this, this success has given you. And it's kind of a dangerous imbalance to have. In a world where anybody is entitled to post anything at any time, as long as it is within 280 characters, it's, it's very surprising to see how few original opinions just come through. The new age social media has this tremendous ability to morph the truth, to hide the origins of where a certain opinion came from and just put anybody on a pedestal as long as they're the one who got the fame for it. This has happened with me as well when I posted somebody else's work and I got all this attention for it. There was, there was this dopamine hit. It kind of incentivizes you to do more of this. But I kind of realized very quickly that this dopamine hit, the, the, the effect that it has does not last very long at all. But unfortunately, at a naive age, say when you're 17, 18, 19, 20, trying to get a foothold in this industry of video making or any industry for that matter, uh, or any place or any situation for that matter, it's, it's, it's very lucrative. It's very lucrative to find, to go for options which give you instant gratifications. But that is a dead end. And I would like to use all the 26 years of experience that I have to pass this on to you. Do not fall into that trap. It's a downward spiral that I personally feel hinders original thinking. There was a phase in my life when I felt like I was just making movies or videos or creative work, which was not mine at all. It had nothing to do with me. I was just copying somebody else and not progressing at all. But there is a solution to that. Inspired by Dr. Morgan Roth's thesis, I propose this idea of goal remapping. When you find yourself with the adequate competence and confidence, you do not just put it into creating work, but you also let it manifest further motivation. Further motivation to go back to your goals and modify them to better suit the new you. You incorporate more role models, you push your boundaries further away and see the possibilities of what else you can achieve and then you need to start this cycle all over again. And this is what is known as goal remapping. Just forming goals based on how you incorporate new role models, new motivations and new skills that you've acquired through this process in the first place. Because when you gain all this new perspective, when you gain all these new virtues that you, that you couldn't even think about a, a while ago, but now you already have, you make yourself the all-time greatest version of yourself. Thank you so much for watching this video. I wanted to make the video a little more in depth, but I felt like this is as articulated as I could get whilst keeping the video within 10 minutes or so. There is a lot more to it than just what I've mentioned in this video about role models shaping somebody else's life. I even mentioned a third definition, which I have not even touched upon. If you want Dr. Morgan Roth's paper, it's listed in the description. You can go ahead and explore that if you want to. And at the same time, my uh, relationship with my role models, uh, I haven't really explored that completely. It's, it's almost impossible to do that. Also, I hope that this didn't come across as this prudish statement that if I see anybody else's work, which is even remotely inspired by somebody else, uh, it's in any way demeaning or inferior. That is absolutely not the case. In fact, this video that you're watching right now has a very similar structure. In fact, most of my latest videos have a structure which is very similar to Johnny Harris's structure because I like the way he prepares for his videos. I like the way that he edits his videos and he structures his entire video. I like his process and I'm trying to inculcate that into my process. I'm trying to find my own style through his. 
and that's perfectly normal that's how it really works but what's important is that you understand that there is nothing new under the sun but there are different perspectives everybody is entitled to a unique perspective at least that is what i believe and once you gain that perspective i don't think the sun really matters so i hope that this video makes you go ahead and find that perspective and share it with the world by the way i also wanted to say happy holidays uh, merry christmas for those who celebrate and a happy new year i hope i hope sincerely that 2021 is far much more better than 2020 anything else no not really yeah i'll see you in the next video